Okay, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, Gemstone Roadmap. Um, no we're behind schedule. I'm going to try to get us a little closer to back on schedule because I don't have very many slides. And some of the ones I have are very short and meaningless, so hopefully this will go fairly quickly. Um, my first topic is Gemstone 32-bit, which is our older product. Um, it's still out there hanging around, but we are taking steps to uh, end of life this product, um, announcing that probably later this year. There's been a few things added recently to the product at request of some of our larger customers. Uh, Multi-threaded garbage collection, automatic symbol garbage collection, some things to override um, uh, some committed login behavior to do with security. Uh, backup and restore from NFS mounted drives is something requested and running on the Power 7 processor on uh, AIX. Some things we've done in the last year or so on 32-bit. Um, this product is planned end of life to be end of life in 2015. Formal announcement was supposed to be coming um, third quarter of this year, but the, uh, the announcement is hung up in the VMware legal process, so it'll probably be sometime late this year before we formally send letters to customers on uh, Gemstone 32. So just to be clear, this is Gemstone 32 only, not Gemstone 64, our main product that we're selling now. And what does this really mean for these customers? It means they're really going to have three years of support left um, to move to Gemstone 64 before we'll uh, not be accepting maintenance renewals and help requests and so on in 2015. So we're trying to give people lots of uh, room to, uh, to move over. Um, I'll talk briefly about Gemstone 3.1, 3 not in great detail. I did a presentation on that last year. Um, 3.1 is our newest release that shipped this year in July. And I'll just walk through briefly some of the things we added to the product in 3.1. And then I'll go on to talk about what's coming or what we're thinking about in 3.2, which is our next major release. Um, one of the big things in 3.1 was the clustered database support. So you can have um, a master gemstone repository and then any number of standby databases. And Gemstone now can manage the um, synchronization of the standby databases with the master automatically for you over a, a socket channel. Um, this has been requested for a long time. A lot of the other commercial database products have had this for a while. Oracle calls it database clustering. But um, it's pretty important for production customers that need disaster recovery and fault tolerance. <coughs> So we added hot standby. Um, we also added um, SSL support in 3.1, and that's both used internally and has an API from Smalltalk, a new class called GS Secure Socket. Um, this class is a subclass of GS Socket, so it's got a lot of the inherited behavior that you'd expect, but it knows how to handle things like XO509 certificates and, and things like that to, to set up secure encrypted socket channels. Um, internally, <coughs> excuse me, we now use SSL to start um, all RPC or remote procedure call logins. So when you have a client, um, a client small talk image or, or whatever it is talking to a gemstone server gem, when, during the login process at least, all that traffic is now encrypted automatically. Once the login is complete, you can either keep using encryption if it's open over the, say, open internet, or you can turn encryption off if it's just over a local network and you don't want the slowdown, because there's a little bit of overhead with encrypting and decrypting everything. Um, we added nested transactions, so you can begin up to 16 sub-transactions in 3.1, and when you abort the transaction, you can roll back some of your changes to some objects, but not necessarily all of them. That's something new. Before that, it was kind of an all or nothing. When you aborted, you rolled everything back that you changed. Now you can divide it up into 16 different sub-transactions. IPv6 support is added in 3.1. Um, of course, IPv4 is still there as well, and you can um, do some mixing and matching on networks that support both. 
You can specify the port numbers that some of the Gemstone server processes listen on. This is, again, important for some of our cloud customers. They're restricted to, say, a port range or only certain ports that they're allowed to use. You can now specify that. Um, automatic garbage collection of unreferenced symbols. Symbols used to be this kind of special object in Gemstone that just never went away because there was a persistent strong reference to all symbols from an all symbols collection. So once you created a symbol, um, it was there forever, you know, and we have customers that, you know, started playing with Gemstone maybe in 1995 and for some reason thought it was a good idea to have, you know, the symbols of all the numeric values up to a million or something like that as symbols. Well, we've seen this out there. And then they go, oh, whoops, I'd like to get rid of those. Well, before this was really no easy way to do that. Now we handle that for you. Um, added a lot of support for UTF string classes over the last few years. We're now using a package called libicu, which is an open source package that we uh, compile into the product to handle the multi-byte and uh, UTF strings. Um, we've got a beginning on that. There's more work needs to be done, but we're way ahead of we were even a few years ago. So that's a summary of what we did in 3.1. Um, 3.2 we're shipping 3.2 a little later next year than we did this year. Um, I guess shipping at the end of, of the half year, right around the end of June, was giving some people in VMware kind of some heartache because end of quarter, end of half, and so on. And um, it's, it's very difficult to get anything done within the two weeks before or after that date is what we found. So we're just pushing it out to August, which is a quieter time. So we're going to be shipping in August probably this year. Um, also, this is not a final list. We are still having meetings with our customers and internally to decide what's going to go into 3.2. This is kind of a smattering of the, of the major contenders um, that are going to be in 3.2. And some of them I can talk about that probably are definitely going to be included. Some of them we're not so sure yet. But we'll just go through the list and we'll give you an idea where we are. Um, the thread safe C interface is um, almost certainly going to be in the release. Um, this will allow um, a client to talk to multiple sessions in a thread safe manner through the C interface or C++ interface as they like. Right now you can sort of do that but it's not truly thread safe. Um, and the existing um, single threaded interface will be built on top of the new uh, multi-threaded interface and everything will be backward compatible so you don't have to change your application if you're doing C calls into Gemstone. But if you want to do it multi-threaded, you'll not be able to. Um, we're going to add support for Solaris 11, probably some other OS changes as well. Not sure what the latest Linux flavor will be, but Solaris 11 has been out for a little while. We're going to update all the open source packages we use in the product. There's getting to be quite a number of these now. SSL, LDAP, YAML, Regex, and LibICU are the obvious ones. So we'll go to the latest version on that. Um, other things we're going to do, the, we're going to finish multi-threading some of the repository operations. We've got most of those done in 3.0, 3.1, including uh, repository-wide garbage collection, things like that. Um, there's only really a few left. Um, some of the page reclaim operations, full backup and full restore, and uh, a GC operation called Mark GC Candidates. And once those four are done, that'll pretty much be it. Everything that has to walk the database or uh, walk across the entire repository will pretty much be multi-threaded at that point. Uh, additional Unicode character features I mentioned before we have more work to do in this area. Um, we're thinking of adding indexing support for that so you can build um, you know gemstone indexes on, on Unicode and multi-code characters strings in your uh, in objects as well as some uh, optimized uh, collection subclasses for the Unicode characters. Right now they kind of handle it, but they're not really optimized for Unicode and we think there's a, a, a strong case for some of these to be um, set up and optimized for Unicode. Um, some new indexing features as well that we'd like to see. I'm not sure this stuff's going to make it in 3.2 or not. Um, something called set valued path terms, which is a long way to say that in one of the objects along an index path is a collection. 
Okay, so you got, say, all employees, and then you've got children, which is a collection because somebody may have zero or more children, and then you search that collection, and then you say match the sex against male here on the bottom line. So it's having an index query on a collection along the query path. Right now, you can't really do that like this in, in Gemstone. Um, there's a number of cases where you kind of need to do that. There's ways around this. You can design you know, other collections and, and dictionaries and so on, but it's not really that clean. This is a cleaner way to do it. Um, it involves some fairly complicated things inside the indexing system to make this work. Um, this is the kind of stuff Dale works on when he's not doing Toad and stepping to Toad and, and that stuff. So this is kind of his other job, which I'm steering him back to a little bit. Um, other indexing things we wanted to have for a long time is, is um, wildcard queries in string matches. Um, real basic stuff is just, you know, last name equals rod star, you know. And you can go absolutely crazy with this stuff with regex expressions and so on, but it'd be nice just to support star and question mark for the, from the beginning, to start with, I mean. And then we can kind of go and see where it leads from there. Um, again, this is harder to implement than it looks, but uh, we think it can be done. Um, hot standby, we have some more features to do there on, on that. We released the initial version of 3.1, like I said. There's um, some real nice things we'd like to add to that as well. Um, mainly encrypted um, stream, and encrypting the socket data stream from the master to the standbys would be really good because you can't always assume you're going over your private data center to a standby node, you might want to go over the open internet and you want your data all secured. So this shouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, Two-phase commits have been talked about for a long time. We have various customers that um, flatten and stream some or all of their object updates out to Oracle or Sybase or something after they update Gemstone. And sometimes those updates are critical and you need to synchronize the, the commit. Um, you know, so if you're going to commit an Oracle and that's okay, commit a Gemstone and that's okay, then the commit happens. And if somebody votes it down, then it doesn't happen. Um, that's a whole other ball of wax complexity, but some basic support in this area would be quite helpful for some of our customers. Um, some other things we're thinking about. Um, optimizing the product to run inside our virtualization suite would be good. Um, there's some things we can do there. To, uh, to make it a little more friendly to vSphere and some of the VMware products where you run inside a, a, you know, a virtual operating system and so on. Um, you know, because you can do things with those like, oh, well, let's just cut the RAM in half and put half it over here. Well, then does Gemstone react well to that? Well, maybe yes, maybe no today. Um, so there's some things we can do there to be a little more friendly with the virtualized world that we'd like to do. Also, um, there's some low-level changes we can do to operate better in the cloud in terms of scalability. The cloud is very picky about things like, um, you know, which machines can listen on a socket, which can accept connections, which can initiate connections. You know, we've kind of taken for granted we can kind of do what we want there for a long time just in the data center. But when you get into the cloud, and you saw some of James's slides maybe this morning, um, a lot of that is very heavily locked down. And we can't just make those assumptions anymore. So there's some things we could do there um, to make uh, Gemstone play a little nicer in the cloud. Um, protection for denial of service attacks on, on NettleDI and Stone. These are processes that have threads listening on, on well-known sockets. And it wouldn't be that hard to set up a DOS attack on those. There's some techniques we can use to minimize that, although that's never been done to our knowledge. But it's, uh, again, making the product more robust for the cloud and, and internet usage. And a load balancer um, within Gemstone. Lots of web servers have load balancers, but when you have a new client connection in and you say have pools of gems running on 100 different servers, how do you decide where to put it? Which, you know, which uh, gem, which, which node should, should support that new VM? Um, right now, it's a fairly manual process. Be nice to automate that. And that's my last slide. Are there any questions?